Okay then my friends, so in the last video we saw how to create a row to output multiple different widgets in that row on the screen. In this video I'm going to show you the opposite direction now, or the opposite axis, which is columns. So that's elements stacking one on top of the other instead of in a horizontal row. So I'm going to remove all of this row stuff right here and I'm going to replace that with a column widget instead. Now, inside this column widget, it's going to be exactly the same kind of thing. We're going to have a children property, and that is going to be a list of widgets like this. So inside here, let's now place a few different widgets so we can see those in a column on the screen. So all I'm going to do is make three containers. I'm going to keep this simple. And each container is going to be colored a little bit differently and sized differently so we can see the difference between them. So inside the first container, let us now do a padding property. And for that, we need our edge insets all the way around, and it's gonna be 20 pixels in each direction. Then we'll give this a color property, and we'll use cyan as the first color. And then finally, we'll do a child, which is going to be a text widget. And inside here, we'll just say, you know, one, something like that, okay. Now it's telling me cyan is not a color. Oh, that's because this needs to be colors, not color. So that should be fine. Now, if I save this, we should see one over there. Cool, so this works. Now, what I'm gonna do is actually just copy this dude and paste it a couple of times below because we're just gonna have three containers and all I'm gonna do is change the padding value for each one. So I'll change this one to 30 and this one to 40. Then I'm also gonna change the colors for each one. So let's see, what can we have for this one? Colors, and let's do pink accent for this one. And then over here, colors, and let's just do amber for this one. So now they're all different colors and all different sizes, we need to change the text in each one. So that's gonna be two, and this is gonna be three. So if I save this now, we can see these three containers stacked on top of each other in a column. So remember, a column goes up and down and a row goes across. Now, before, when we started to lay these out, we used the main axis alignment property to lay them out in a row and a cross axis alignment property to lay them out vertically. Now it's opposite for this because the main axis in a column is vertical, right? That's the main axis now. And the cross axis in a column is horizontal. So if we want to control the main axis alignment, the vertical alignment in the column here, we use the main axis alignment property. So let's try doing that inside the column because at the minute, these are all just bunched up at the top. So let me do main axis alignment and we need the main axis alignment object. Then let's try center first of all. So this places them in the center of the column, cool. Let's try something else. I'm gonna try dot end, and no surprises, this is gonna to go to the end. And let's try something else. I'm gonna say now space evenly, save it, and we can see these spaced evenly. So it works exactly the same way as a row, but just in the opposite direction, the opposite axis. So we've done this one. Now let's try the cross axis alignment. So let's use that property and get the cross axis alignment object like so and i've said for the first one here dot stretch now what do you think this is going to do well if we save it we can see that now they stretch across now there's still a gap between each one because we've said space evenly in the cross alignment but if i was to say something like end then they're going to bunch together at the end and that looks quite nice okay so let's explore a different property here we'll say cross axis alignment and then we'll say center and that is basically the default because they're all in the center of the column. This one is in the center, this one is in the center, and this is the full width of the column. If we change this to start, then they're all gonna be bunched up to the left of the column. If we change it to end, then they're gonna be bunched up to the right of the column. So the best way to get familiar with these columns and rows and these different axis alignments is to just play around with them and just try out different layouts with these columns and rows. Now, the cool thing is, is that we can add a row inside a column or a column inside a row. For example, I could come down here inside the widget list and add a row as the first widget. 
and inside this row I do my children property which is going to be a list and inside this I can just do a text which is going to be hello and then I'll do another text widget after that inside this row which is going to be world okay so now we have at the top of the column a row as the first widget then three containers and inside the row we have two widgets text and text so if I save this now we can see that this is the first widget and it's above the rest of them now these have all gone to the end over here because we have a row now which is taking up the full width of the page so now the column is full width and we said over here that we want the main axis alignment to be end and the cross axis alignment to be end so that's why they're over here at the bottom so there we go my friends that is columns and rows in a nutshell again just play around with these work on different layouts and you will get the hang of it in no time and we are going to be using them quite frequently as we go forward so you will get more practice as we continue as well